Well, will Microsoft Teams kill email? That really is a bold and optimistic claim. And I think the short answer is quite possibly. But we've got up to half an hour here, so you're going to get the slightly longer answer than that. So what I'm going to do is show you Microsoft Teams and we will discuss the scenarios in which it will really reduce the emails that you get in your inbox. And then depending on time, I'll cover some tips and tricks for reducing email in Outlook whilst making sure I leave 10 minutes or so at the end for any questions. So let me come out of this and start off in Office 365 because Microsoft Teams is a component of Office 365, which Microsoft announced in November of last year and then started rolling out to customers who already had Office 365 from about March of this year. So if you've already got an Office 365 plan, you've probably already got Teams. And you'll see the tile there in the bottom row here in the Office 365 portal, but I've already got it loaded on my other tab there. So let me just dive into that. And I'll just give you a quick overview of the interface because over on the left hand side here, there's my navigation bar and you'll see that I'm clicked in the Teams area and the idea is how it's structured at the very top level you have teams that you are a member of so a team of course being a group of people and you can see I'm a member of four different teams here and then if I expand these you'll see within each team I've got different channels a channel being a topic of conversation that we want to talk about and you will also see that each team by default has got a general channel and then it's within these channels where we have the conversations. So on the main part of my screen here, if I just scroll up, you can see all of the grey bits are the bits that I've typed and the white bits are other people's entries. And what I really like about these is that they are threaded. So what you'll see is I can just click on reply there to reply to something and just say thanks and then click the little arrow there over on the right hand side to send it. But if I want to start a new conversation, then down the bottom of the screen, I'm just going to paste in some text that I already had on my clipboard for speed. I can, of course, just click the little arrow to send that post into that channel. But also look underneath that bit of text. I've got a few other options which are worth looking at. The first one gives me options for formatting my text. And if I click it, you'll see it expands a little bit. I can add a subject line. I've got lots of formatting options. I can mark it as important. So quite a few nice options there. I can also add an attachment. I can add all of our favourite little emojis. Where would we be without all of these? I can even add little giffies, which are great fun. There we go. Quite a few different ones to choose from or all, all sorts of stickers and whatnot as well. And the last little button there, we can even have meetings in Teams, but that's perhaps a topic for another day. But I think the point being, we can make these conversations rich and visual. It's not just sort of plain text type of entries. Anyway, let me send that on its way. But why is this so far better than email? Well, email isn't very good at conversations. You know, if somebody says, is it easy to find? And somebody else says, yes, they're above the post office. And somebody else says, thanks. Can you imagine sending that out to the whole team and having those reply alls coming into your inbox? It's silly having these little silly, trivial little replies clogging up your inbox. It's really, really not a good use of email, but it's perfect in a group conversation like this. And also research tells us that the majority of emails that we send are actually amongst the same group of people, the same team. And it's no mistake that I use the word team there. We would be much better off using Microsoft Teams to have these collaborative conversations rather than trying to have these group conversations using email. And it's much easier to scan the different conversations and the different channels rather than having all of these messages piling into our inbox in chronological order. And another really compelling reason to use Teams rather than email is what if somebody new joins your team? Now, you can imagine you might have loads of relevant emails for that new person and you'd have to dig them all out and send them on. And if you were that new person, it's not really that useful having a whole bunch of emails that you've got to try and make head or tail of. But with Microsoft Teams, all I would do is add them as a member to the team. So if I'm the owner of a team and you can have multiple owners of one team, but I can just add a member. And that means any new personnel can see all of those conversations that have gone on and quickly get up to speed. So I really like that. So then you might say to me that you prefer email because you like the desktop notification that pops up when somebody sends you an email and, and you like seeing all of the unread emails at the top of the list rather than having to read through all of these conversations. 
Well, we can address that, but it's different in Teams. What you'll see is the channels will go bold if there's content in there that's new since I was last in that channel. So you can see visually what there is to be read. And if somebody replies to one of your conversations or at mentions you, then you do get a notification pop up. We just saw that pop out there. I just sent myself a little message there from another machine. And also look over on the left hand side of the screen. I've got these red alerts popping up all over the place here. So the red number one there indicates that there is something in there worthy of note there's the at mention that I just sent to myself and it's flagged there in bright red but also I don't know if you saw they've gone now because I clicked it but also on the left hand side I had a notification in my activity entry in the navigation pane here and the activity is really good this will summarize for you all of your activity in your feed and this really is a summary of all of the content that's relevant to me and I can filter this if I want to to see perhaps just the unread items or the at mentions or the replies to any of my messages or whatever and in addition to that if you like the idea of being alerted if there's a particular channel that's of great interest to you then you can follow that channel and that means that you will be alerted whenever something new is added to that particular channel so it is very different to working with emails or coming into your inbox but it is very efficient and very collaborative now all of these conversations are visible to the entire team well that is the whole point of a collaborative experience but then you say to me well that doesn't replace all of my emails because of course sometimes I want to mail just one person or just one or two people not the whole team well that's where we would have a chat in teams so over on the left hand side here, if you click on chat you can see all of these different chats that I've been having and interestingly I'm clicked on the James chat here and you can see there's a little green icon next to his little picture there to indicate that he is online and he is in teams right now so I think perfect I need to grab him so I'm just gonna say hello and this is, of course, suspiciously similar. You probably heard the little bing there as it came in on my other machine. So he's just going to say hi. But this is suspiciously similar to our Skype for Business experience. So yes, we've got built-in instant messaging in the form of chats in our Teams product. And you can see, again, similar to Skype for Business, look at the top there. I can easily promote this chat to a video or an audio call or add other people to this conversation as well. But again, these quick little chats are stopping a second sending those silly little emails that clog up people's inboxes. Let's just ponder now just how many emails we send discussing files. So let's imagine this is me sitting here at my computer and I'm going to send an email out to everybody with an attachment of a spreadsheet I need to send to them. So I send that email out with the file attached. So very common practice. And then half an hour later, I think, ah, oh, no, that wasn't actually the right version I sent out. So I sent out another email to everybody saying, oh, sorry about that, but I've made a change. This is now the revised spreadsheet. And then somebody will reply and say, oh, well, thanks for that. I'm now going to forward that to the rest of the team. And I reply saying, thanks for doing that. And then they reply saying, well, we've made some changes. Please see attached. So you can see here, it's not even a very complicated conversation, but we've got different attachments floating around. We've got quite a bit of exchange going on just around a simple document. Now, I'm not saying that all of you are doing this at the moment because, of course, we've got much more efficient ways of doing this. But it is really tidy the way we can work with files in Microsoft Teams. So let me show you. So I'm just going to go to this channel here and start a new conversation by clicking that paperclip button down there to upload a file from my computer. It's a spreadsheet. There it is, Southern Targets. That takes a few seconds to upload and then people can reply to that and have a conversation. But if I click this button here, I can make that file a tab. Now when I do that, look at the top of the screen. That file is now available on that tab, so it's available all the time. I can go back to my conversations at any time and then I can always very easily get back to that file. So what's nice about this, it means that when other people are working in this channel, they can see that and then we can have a conversation about that file. So if I start the conversation, so I might just want to put in here, here are our targets or something. And this might look a bit crowded to you. Well, I'm running quite a low resolution on this webinar today, but you will probably want to run at a higher resolution or you can enlarge the tab to make that take up more of the screen. Now let's imagine other users have spotted that this file has arrived in the channel and I'm going to go in and edit this file. So rather brilliantly, of course, this file is stored in SharePoint. So it's all just one copy of the file stored in one place. So I'm going to open it up in Excel online to make some edits to it. 
But of course, anybody else could also be looking at this file and deciding to edit it. So let's imagine I'm working away on this file. I'm making some changes to it. It's just one copy of this file, remember. And then I'm hoping this will pop up. There we go. Over on the right hand side there, you can see that Joni is now editing this workbook as well. So I just love the way that when we share files in Teams, it's just one copy of the file stored up there in SharePoint and we can edit the same copy of the file and have that co-authoring experience all driven from within Microsoft Teams. Now, it's not only files that we can have conversations around in Microsoft Teams. Look at this channel, look at the different tabs I've got here. So similar to the way that we had that file as a tab in the previous example, I've now got, for example, a wiki or even a Power BI sheet embedded into Microsoft Teams. And again, I can click the conversation window to start a conversation around that. But just as an aside, I love this. This is completely interactive. So if you're familiar with Power BI, you'll know how brilliant it is. But it's really great being able to use it within Microsoft Teams. Or maybe I've got um, some videos from Microsoft Stream in here so I can make that connection. And again, I can launch the conversation window to start having a conversation around that. Or maybe you use Microsoft Planner. So that's another Office 365 capability to help you manage team tasks. I've got an example here. And again, you know what I'm going to say here, I can click the conversation window to start a conversation around that. So just think, how many emails are we not sending by, by being able to have these conversations around these different tabs in Microsoft Teams? I absolutely love it. So I would say if you're collaborating with a known group of people with a team, then by using Microsoft Teams, you should be able to dramatically cut back on the amount of internal email that you get. And you can actually have up to 999 members in a team. So if certainly for smaller businesses and medium sized businesses, well, that's going to cater for most of your internal email requirements. But of course, you're not going to be able to get rid of email completely. So I think let's finish off this webinar with five or 10 minutes of Outlook tips and tricks. So here I am in my demo Outlook inbox and you can see, look at the bottom left hand corner, I've got 42 items in my inbox. And the first tip just to mention to you is to view your emails as conversations. Now, some people love this and some people hate it. I wonder which you will be. But if you click on the all button just at the top of your list of emails, that as an aside is a quick way of filtering by unread emails or changing how they are arranged or sorted. But there is this show as conversations option. And when you choose that, what it'll do, it doesn't reduce, obviously, the number of emails in your inbox, but it groups all of your emails by the conversation thread. And emails that do have an associated thread have now got this little triangle next to them, which means you can expand and collapse those emails. So it is a very convenient way of, of reducing the actual entries in your inbox because they've all been you know, condensed into these separate conversation threads. I don't use conversation view. I don't know why. I'm just a bit old school. I think I quite like my emails just arriving chronologically, but do give it a go. I think if you use it for half a day, you will know whether you are a conversation view person or not. Sometimes I do switch it on just to have all of the emails from one particular thread group together and then switch it off again. So give it a go. The next thing to mention to you is a rather marvelous feature called clean up. Now, Imagine you've been on holiday for a couple of weeks and you come back from holiday and, and those two weeks that you've been away, there's been lots of conversations in email gone on without you. So you've got to trawl through all of this when you come back. So what cleanup will do, if you have a look up at the top left hand corner for the cleanup button, this removes the redundant messages in your either just a conversation or your whole inbox. And the idea is a redundant message is a message that is duplicated elsewhere. So if you've got lots of conversations, you probably only need to keep the most recent email of that conversation and any other unique entries in that thread, like if there was an attachment or something, all of the rest are redundant. So I'm going to choose that option to clean up the whole folder. And I would suggest you absolutely do this when you get back from holiday. And it says all redundant messages will be moved to deleted items. But there are some settings that you can control. Now, I tend to stick with the default settings, but you can see here that you can firstly control where the cleaned up items go to. So the default is to deleted items, but you could browse and choose a different folder. And there are a few other criteria here which you can identify to control what actually does and doesn't get cleaned up. But anyway, I will leave it at the default for now. And I'm going to be bold and say, yep, clean up folder. So we started off with 42 items in our inbox, remember? It's now gone down to 35. So I don't know or care which emails it's got rid of. I just know that they were redundant. I didn't need them. They were duplicates. So if I look in my deleted items folder, sure enough, that's where all those cleaned up items have gone. 
but I'm actually going to put them back into my inbox so that I can uh, use them for my next uh, for my next feature I want to show you. So have a look at this email here. I've got an email about the company walking weekend and another one and another one. Now, if that's not a bad use of email, I don't know what is. So this is clogging up my inbox, all of these emails about the company walking weekend, and I'm not going on the company walking weekend. I'm not interested. I don't care. I hate walking. Oh, so I'm quite annoyed that I'm getting all of these emails. So a rather brilliant feature, which I love, is called ignore. You can ignore that conversation. <laughs> so when you click that, what will happen is the selected conversation, so walking weekend, and all future messages on that same conversation will go to the deleted items folder. Now notice that this time we don't have a settings button, so we can't control other details about this like we could with the cleanup. It's just kind of ignore or not. Well, I am going to ignore. So it'll take all of those walking weekend emails out of your inbox and put them in deleted items. And then any future emails that people send on that same conversation thread will go straight into deleted items. And look at the top of the screen here. You can see that that ignore button is kind of switched on. It's pressed in. So if you want to unignore a conversation or stop ignoring the conversation, probably is better English, then you can choose that. And then all of those emails go back into your inbox. So I do use this freely. I do find it very useful, but I get some people that get a bit nervous about it. They don't use it because they think they might miss something. So, yeah, that is true. You know, what's going to happen if people start using the walking weekend email conversation to start talking about the Christmas party? Well, I'm going to miss it. I'm not going to see it. But that does, I think, highlight an email etiquette issue here. So you shouldn't hijack an existing conversation to start talking about a new topic. You should start a new thread if you want to talk about a new topic. Look at this email here from Joni. If I scroll through it, you'll see that me and Joni have been treating email like a, an instant messaging type of uh, tool. And that sort of thing's going to clog up your inbox. So rather than replying to these short emails like this, then consider replying using IM. So I can see that Joni is online. She's using Skype for Business. She's signed in. She's available. So I can reply to that using IM. And that just feels like an efficient way of working because I know she's available. I know she's online. So I'm going to say, how about Wednesday? Because she's been asking for some availability and send that on its way. And don't forget, your instant message conversations are all stored in your conversation history in Outlook. So therefore, if you're going to be searching for conversations, then they will appear in here. And rather nice, you can see that that IM that I sent to Joni, it has retained the subject line of the email that I triggered the instant message from. So it's all part of the same thing. When I'm searching for information on the ROH account, it will pop up. Now, one more tip to mention to you with Outlook, and that's to think creatively about using your automatic replies. So we traditionally think of using automatic replies when you're away on holiday or when you're out of the office. But think about using automatic replies to give people who want to contact you a fighting chance of contacting you in the way that you would prefer them to contact you. So look at this. I've got an example here. So I've got automatic replies being sent to say that I'm in a series of meetings until Friday and therefore I'm unlikely to respond to your email until Friday afternoon. So if you need a more urgent response, then text me or contact Joni. Whereas for people outside of my organisation, I've put the same sort of thing, but I've actually put in a mobile number and the email address of my colleague. But that means, firstly, I'm not going to get emails in my inbox that I'm not going to be able to deal with until Friday. And also they will be more likely to get a timely response because they're going to be contacting me in a way that I have indicated is going to be suiting me best at the moment. Now, I do realise this will depend a little little bit on your company culture as to whether this is acceptable, but it's not just for when you are actually out of the office. Think creatively. So back to our original question then, will Teams kill email? Well, speaking from personal experience, it should dramatically reduce your internal emails really quite in a big way. So that's something you can absolutely look forward to if you adopt Microsoft Teams. And then we can be smarter with Outlook. Use the features available to reduce any remaining email.